vino spumeggiante nel bicchiere cintillante con il riso dell'amante mi tirfonde il giubilo day today, very chilly for June 11, uh, but a very good day for having a pasta alla carbonara with a dear friend. So I'm bringing salad from the garden and some of my wine. Okay, let's go. One of the themes of my book, Feast from Paradiso, is that Italian culture and cuisine have evolved over time in sometimes surprising ways, and certainly now things are changing at a much faster pace. This street 60 years ago would have been densely populated by people from Serrano. Some claim that there were as many as 4,000 people that lived in Serrano in its heyday. And considering that 10 people lived in the home of Aneta Forti, who we visited in the last episode, that number wouldn't be so unlikely. Nowadays there are something like 150 year-round residents. When I came here 25 years ago, there were still a few Soranesi living along this street. And now most have moved away or passed on. Today there are people from Venice, Milan, Florence, and Rome who have holiday retreats. But there are also people from the United States, Britain, Sweden, France, Germany, Romania, and Japan. Today we're visiting with Catherine Melker and her husband Martin Ostertag. Catherine is half German and half Italian. Her family are musicians and have been in Serrano even longer than I have, almost 30 years. Catherine is going to make us a pasta alla carbonara, which is traditionally spaghetti or bucatini made with guanciale sliced pig's cheeks, grated pecorino romano, which is aged sheep cheese, and egg. Catherine has her own, shall we say, German twist that purists might object to, but I have to say that it is one of the best carbonaras I've ever had. Thank you, Ronnie. Hey, yeah. Uh, hang on. I'm coming in. I'm coming in. So, here you are. Grazie. È già lavato? Sì. The salad is washed. And this is not washed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is uh, the preparation of the carbonara. This is uh, cured pancetta. Mm -hmm. And how many, how many pieces? One for each, one for and each. one extra because they are very thin this time. Uh -huh. so, I so this is a recipe for four people. Yes. And you are now slicing up the pancetta. And uh, tell me how you're going to prepare the carbonara. So I need very, very fresh egg uh -huh. from, from a contadino. Uh -huh. It's fresh eggs from a local farmer. Oh. <laughs> that came a long way. Yes, <laughs> that came a long way. But I'm desperate because I never find them here. So no? No. It's very good. I can get some for you. Yeah, okay, next time I ask you. So one egg for each and one... Yolk. 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 One yolk. Yeah. Then parmigiano. Mm -hmm. um, aglio. So you fry the aglio in the pan first or do you do, you yeah. do it all together? No, I do it all together. And together it's... Together with... The, Pancetta. And how much aglio? Just one. I take a little bit of parmigiano, then I put the eggs and then I try if it's ready or not. It needs to be creamy. Creamy, yeah. Good. But not too... And then to have it a little bit more... Um, less creamy, <laughs> I put a little, a little bit of milk. Two tablespoons of milk? Yeah. Mixed in with the eggs and the parm and the parmesan. Mm -hmm. Just to make it a little bit more less thick. Mm -hmm. So this is one egg for each and one extra. 
So that's four eggs and an extra yeah. egg for four people. Good. So you would estimate you put about a cup of... A cup, a cup mm, of parmesan. parmesan. Yeah. Four teaspoons of milk. Yeah. How does it smell, Sean? Fantastic. Great. <laughs> you don't have a smell thing on the, on the <laughs> iPad. If you just smell meter or something, and everybody would be able to smell how wonderful it is. There you go. Okay, well, Catherine prepares the carbonara and Sean smells it. I'm going to go for a little tour of, of the house. I put the pasta. Ah, oh, you're yeah. going to put the pasta in the water. Eight minutes to take, make the tour of the house. Okay, good. I'm going to first have a look out the window. They have a really glorious view from the windows of the River Valley. Not husband to Catherine, who was until very recently the first cellist at the Freiburg in Baden Baden Symphony Orchestra, is practicing. They've just, uh, within the last few years, renovated these two apartments and combined them into one, a single home. And they've done a really wonderful job and have a lovely collection of artwork that we're going to go out and visit. Martin, as he's practicing. Bravo, Martino. Hello. Come to have a look around. Now, this is your mother, is that right? This is my mother, yeah. Uh -huh. And this is a painting of Beatrice Banderin, who's a noted painter who lives here. And there's even one of my pieces that Martin and Catherine very kindly got for me. And tell me about the, uh, your most recent recording with Katrin. The idea was to record uh, rarely played uh, music. And those two duets for viola and cello are really very, very rare. And this is, we can say, almost a complete recording of this set, viola and cello. And the music is really interesting. It goes from early Baroque to, to the newest composers like this Julian Milone in England who is not known at all but who writes very good music. And I think it's a good recording what we did. And Catherine is such a gifted viola player. If you, you know her hands, mm -hmm. you know, this is, fits exactly for the viola. But she's uh, a violinist with the orchestra. She's a, a violinist, like her father, but also her father had those hands, and also he played very well the viola. Hmm. Which Good. He did sometimes here, and also in Zorana. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to get back to the cooking. Yeah. Thank you. You have the smell already. Right? Yeah. <laughs> back to the cooking. She's very sweet. Yeah, she, she has a, she's a little tiger stripe. Are we talking about cats again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we got a new a new baby in the house. So. And as yes. an as in kitten, not as in baby. Another little bit. Another tiny, tiny bit. Probably a minute. Okay. Mm. Bacon. Want to show it? Yeah. Looking very crispy. Yeah, not too crispy. Mm. Huh? Okay. Mm. Pasta's ready? Pasta's ready. Ah. I know some people put it in the, in the pan, mm. but I don't. So what you've done is you've tossed the spaghetti into the... Immediately, yeah. And now and I try mixture. not to take all the grasso of the bacon. It's too much. Mm. <laughs> I 
like so this the, noise. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you can't smell it, but you can yeah, hear it. You can this ah, is actually, how yeah. a good carbonara yeah, has to has to sound. Sound. Ah. Listen. Should not be too dry. That's why I put a little bit of milk. Okay, that's it. Buon appetito! Buon appetito! Good idea. I wouldn't have made carbonara today. Well, it's a, it's a perfect it's a day. Perfect it's a perfect day? day? Yeah. Here's the aglio. Mm. Oh, yes. Very good. Yeah, so you, you certainly have been nervous to cook in front of a professional. <laughs> Not to cook, but to speak. <laughs> <laughs> because with Christopher, I mix all languages. So you have to remember which one. Yeah, 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 it's no problem with him because he understands everything. Your mother's from Genoa originally, you know? and your father from Hamburg. And your mother's a very good cook, isn't she? She's a very good cook. Yeah. But so she does not make carbonara. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> she makes carbonara. <laughs> <laughs> she makes pa pesto as a Genovese. So, salute. Ah, ah yes. Salute. Salute. Yeah. Salute. What a wonderful camera. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Salute. This is a very good way. It's a pity that it's an American who made it. That's what I must say. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 that bit's going to get edited out. <laughs> 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 when, when, when you are uh, greeted in Oh, I'm with Americano, and you're like, oh, I'm almost, I'm almost tempted to, to explain to them that you are not anymore an American. Yeah, no, that's this maybe they is, don't this is, No, they do. But I think you've given up explaining to them as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once you're branded with, a, with something, mm -hmm. for me, that, uh, I'm, depending on who it is, I'm, I'm always Connery. So I'm oh. always oh. Oh. Connery, mm -hmm. because they couldn't get their head around me being called Sean. And it's funny if you see them try and spell it, that it comes out in all different ways, but Sean, they look at you and you go, like, like Sean Connery. Uh -huh. Ah, okay, no, so, no, no. so <laughs> now I'm obviously <laughs> so. It's just You would like to have a coffee, protective. espresso. Coffee, yeah. Espresso, 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 espresso. Yes. Okay. Sugar, milk. sugar, milk. No sugar, no milk. Sugar. 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 Uh, it depends on the oh, quality. Okay. <laughs> if, it, if it comes out perfectly, I'll take sure. Okay. You know what they say in Brazil, how a cafecine should be? Yeah. A black uh, like the night, mm. hot like the sun, and sweet like love. <laughs> Isn't it? This is perfect. It's typical. This is the country. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was wonderful. Mm. I Thank you very much. Thank you. That was a delicious carbonara. Benissimo. Ciao.